There's a feeling in this room, in the music and in the fellowship of these people, that tells us something about South Carolina that we couldn't learn from the almanac or the encyclopedia. Like how wonderful it must be to live in a place where the heartbeat of people's everyday lives is charged with this kind of emotion. In a place where the rivers of history and heritage flow right past your house, from which you can drink whenever you're thirsty. How can you live fully in the complexities of the modern world and still find nourishment in the spiritual power of your great-grandparents? How do people grow and move forward with the times without letting go of a lot of good things? The people of South Carolina have some beautiful responses to these questions. I know you feel good about yourself, okay? Maribel Howe is also an embodiment of the Charleston style. How could she not be? The house she lives in with its masterpieces of furniture, its sweeping staircases and high coffered ceilings is a museum of a vanished way of life for the awestruck tourists who visit it. I'm Maribel Howe. But this is also Maribel's home, even if the tourists' admission fees do help with expenses. She occupies this home with an authority that helps to explain why Charleston looks the way it does today. Because while Charlestonians are Americans, and certainly they are South Carolinians, sometimes it does seem as if they're Charlestonians first. Being convinced that they are right and not having to impress anybody, they don't have to impress anybody because they already think that what they do is what should be done. All right, where else do you find a peninsula city that doesn't have any hot dog stands or any high rises in it? And I think that's sort of like the history of Charleston. Other people in South Carolina decide to reform it or change it or uh, monkey with it in any way and nothing ever comes of it. It's just a little, little one night stand and then Charleston goes back to being Charleston again. 